Hey guys, this is the first Mercy Tips video where I attempt to show you and explain some of the things that I do and why I do them. So this first video is going to be about healing priorities and how to defend yourself as Mercy with emphasis on using her pistol and damage boost. But before we get into that, I have pre-recorded footage of my Mercy settings for everyone to, you know, enjoy. It's probably hella awkward, but that's apparently the type of person I am, so. <laughs> oh, just enjoy. If nothing is explained well in this video, please ask me and I'll either make a follow-up video or just explain it to you in the comments. People keep asking me about my mercy settings. So, just gonna slap it at the beginning of this video. For sensitivity, I have higher horizontal than vertical. And along with that, I also have low aim smoothing. You see right here. <laughs> because I like to turn extremely fast, apparently. But what it lets me do, and why I, uh, why I turned it up this high is because as Mercy, like I have less focus on actually aiming smoothly to the enemy team, but I want to be able to look around my surroundings and at my team quickly. So these settings let me like basically stand in one place and turn in a circle. It's essentially all I really do with my life is Mercy. My aim technique is, uh, Exponential ramp. There's not really a reason. F I can't remember the reason for it, except it feels a lot better to me than dual zone, so. So, for my reticle, um, I'm not sure if anyone's actually noticed, but I think on one account, I have a very, very light dot, but every other one for Mercy, there's no reticle. And it goes straight back into the same thing of I don't really need to focus on the enemy, like, actually aiming at the enemy team most of the time. Like, my job is my team and keeping them alive. I also had a request to explain some of Mercy's hero-specific settings. Other than, you know, allied health bars, which you should honestly have on if you're playing a healer. Just come on. Uh, toggle, toggle beam connection, like, honestly for me it's just so that... I don't have to hold down on the button. So if it's on, you just press it once and it's on and then... Guardian Angel Prefer's beam target is what allows me to heal one person and fly to another. It's really more of a preference thing. Because when you have it off, like I do, you have more freedom of movement. But if you have it to prefer on, you can do things like take the whale in Elios, for example. As long as you're healing someone, you can hop in that whale and just float there for a couple seconds and then zoom right back out of it. It's really neat, but I just really prefer the fluidity and movements of having it off. So, Targle Guardian Angel off. This little pesky thing right here. I have mine set to off permanently instead of on. And honestly, at this point, it's just... If I change that, I would have absolutely no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Or why Guardian Angel doesn't work correctly. But I think it has something to do with being able to stop Guardian Angel just by pressing the button again. Like you hold it to fly and then you let go of it. So it's... It's a preference. They're all preferences, but off is just... It feels like the best option here. I don't know why my Guardian Angel sensitivity here is set to 94. So we're just not gonna bother. Right. See, this is where it gets weird, is when you look at my uh, individual settings. Because this is like a console-specific issue. Like, we do not have as many buttons to bind things to as you do on a PC. So I had to get a little bit weird with the Mercy settings. When they switched her uh, Resurrect from an ult to an ability, like, its default was set to L2, I think. But for most people, or for everyone if you don't change it, L2 
and X, like, originally will double as your jump and the angelic descent slow fall thing. So, if you're trying to float by someone who's died, you'll accidentally trigger the resurrection and be stuck there for two seconds and not want it. I didn't even know about this. Before this even launched, I was using L2 for the angelic descent because when you're hovering in midair, it would let me use the thumbsticks to turn. So I kind of didn't even use X for jumping. <laughs> but when the update launched with the new Mercy rework, I put resurrect on X and just kept her jump on L2 because this way, you know, everything was smooth lined and the only thing I really had to do was just train myself to learn that X did not ever trigger a jump anymore. It took a few weeks, but it works. So now this is what my settings are. Jump is L2 for Mercy. It's X for literally every other character. So sometimes I'll switch characters and try to press L2 and do nothing, which is entertaining. But then her resurrect is set for X. Those are the big differences, I think. Other than, let's see, I think I've got web, yeah, weapon switch is on L3. So if you see me, I will do that a lot, like, while waiting for rounds or to begin or just on the way, like, walking back from spawn, I'll just switch weapons for no reason. It's L3 for ease of uh, access and just like quick melee on R3. It's just, it's quicker <laughs> to be able to hit those for me rather than any of these other buttons in the world. Those are my Mercy settings. Uh, they should be up there long enough that you can actually, like, look at them individually. And hopefully I did a good enough job of actually explaining everything. <laughs> so, first up is Mercy's healing priorities and just, you know, a few things that I keep in mind while I play her. My initial and usually main priority is on tanks. This clip here is mainly me trying to keep Reinhardt alive because they just did not want him to stay alive. I focus priority on the tanks because they are both what takes the most damage in your team, usually, and what is protecting the rest of your team. Like Reinhardt's shield, Zarya's bubbles, Winston's tiny bubble, <laughs> that kind of thing. Tanks protect you, you want to heal them, it's simple math, you know. Now, I don't have any clips of it, sadly, but my second priority is always my secondary healers. I will stop healing anyone else on my team to save them. It's just how I work. With your secondary healer, whoever it is, they are helping to keep the rest of your team alive. So I just feel like they deserve a higher priority when they're in danger. Otherwise, critical. And being targeted, like my poor Winston friend here. If someone is being targeted, you want to try and help them. So just, it'll take you a bit, like I'm still working on this, but if you can notice and pick up on when one of your teammates is being targeted and is in danger, heal them, trust your second healer to keep an eye on the rest of your team. They, they do their job, trust me. <laughs> what you want to be able to do though with critical targets is switch it. You don't want to just have all your focus on one person. You have to be able to like switch your targets between one critical person to the next. Like we have D.Va who's critical and one of my DPS at the bottom. You have to be able to just switch, like leave someone half health or above half, switch to the next person, go back and forth. This will usually keep everyone alive. And that's really what you want in the end. Like, not full health targets, but living targets. It's not always gonna work. Like, people die. You have to, you know, accept it, move on. But it's generally what you want to do. Like, just practice it and learn how to uh, manage your healing. And I know I keep rising in these clips, but that's that's next video. I promise. <laughs> so, quick recap. My healing priorities go tanks, healers, DPS. And if the healer is in danger, I will typically switch them to main priority. And clearly, obviously, you will have to adjust it. Your priorities will 
typically at some point in the game get right, tossed out the right, window. Right. In situations like this clip, like I said before, people will die when everyone is injured. You have to learn to use your best judgment on when to res, when to keep healing. It'll get easier with practice, just like anything that I'll cover in this video and in future videos. Mercy, she's not difficult mechanically, but judgment and game sense, all of that comes into play. And the more you play her and adapt to her role and the different things you can do, it'll get easier for you. Some other things you want to prioritize healing over are ulting Faras and Roadhogs because they don't really have a way to defend themselves. Faras are still... Roadhog can't heal. You want to catch teammates, if you can, that have been hooked by Roadhog. It'll take practice to uh, catch on to when they've been hooked, but you can save lives that way. Not every time, but sometimes. Uh, high charge Zarya's are definitely a priority. You want her alive when she's got a lot of charge. She does a hell of a lot of damage. So next up is how to defend yourself as Mercy. What I mentioned before was the uh, damage boost and pistol usage, which are very important and we'll get into in a bit. But what I wanted to focus on first was using Guardian Angel and positioning to its fullest. All of these clips that you're going to see right now are me just flying all over the place, basically. Because to me, personally, Mercy's greatest asset to her team is staying alive. You want to be alive for every team fight if you can. And she is incredibly hard to kill as long as you're moving. A Mercy that's flying all over the place is just ridiculous. You, as Mercy, have to prioritize healing your team in a fight. You can't just whip out your pistol just because someone focuses you. You're pretty much always going to be focused. Just learn to expect it. And have Guardian Angel as your greatest element of defense. Mercy's mobility is just one of the highest in the game, so use it. You don't always want to be flying around. You have to learn to use your judgment of, am I in cover? Am I safe? Am I in danger? It gets, it's a lot to handle at first, but like I said, it, these things get easier. You'll notice in my videos, I don't usually stay still. A mercy that's standing still is essentially a dead mercy. That new momentum they kept to Guardian Angel, like you'll see me use it right here. The little jump after you fly to someone is just incredibly useful. You don't always want to use it because it will get you into trouble. But honestly, most of the time, you're not hurting anything. Use it to get away from flankers, attackers, no. <laughs> just to get between your teammates faster. It'll get easier, uh, like I keep saying. <laughs> uh, this clip here, though, is a really good segue into using her pistol. Yeah. I will typically attack someone if I'm on my own, or if I'm assisting a, uh, a teammate. Generally, what you want to keep in mind is you will know if you can kill someone attacking you, or if you should escape. For me, I'm more confident in my ability to survive than shooting. So that's what I tend to do. I will take advantage of, like if I'm in Valk and my team is generally full, I will take advantage of just spamming into the enemy team because you know, why not <laughs> at that point? I will spam chokes if I can get away with it. These are just things that I do. What you want to do, though, is always practice with Mercy's Pistol. Use it in quick play, go into deathmatch, figure out, you know, which aim smoothing settings work for her shooting and for her maneuverability. Figure out which aim technique you like. The sensitivity, everything is just really important. What I tend to do is I have a custom game mode with Ana's. <laughs> Ana bots, headshot only, they can't fire, they can't heal. It just helps me because she's one of the smallest character models. And she can't headshot you anyway, so. So all of you, most likely, know 
Oh, well, damage boost, so how useful it can be. I do feel like it's a self-defense tool as well, when you use it correctly. Like, damage boost people when someone is after you. It'll help. Like, right here, I boost this Widow to kill this Doomfist before he could kill both of us. Because that would definitely have been what would have happened. Some general tips, though, that I tend to keep in mind is at the beginning of matches, especially defense rounds, I'll boost long-range targets like your snipers, your hit scans, Farah, Junkrat, even on you can boost an Orisa, a Diva's micro missiles. Little things like that are just great things to do at the beginning of matches or beginning of team fights. You also want to keep in mind uh, boosting your DPS who need their ults and a Zenyatta who needs his transcendence back. Ults that you can damage boost include, you know, the obvious things like Visor, High Noon, and Barrage. You can also damage boost Coalescence and Dragon Blade, probably a handful of other things that I forget. Reinhardt you can damage boost after his ult, because in general a Reinhardt is going to either charge or fire strike after he ults, and those can be damage boosted. <laughs> Um, I just want to go ahead and say right now, when you're boosting a Fara, since it's this pharmacy right now, you will want to keep a close eye on her health and balance healing. I can make an entire video on pharmacy. I have enough fucking practice with it. Some other useful tips include uh, boosting a McCree after he stuns and a Roadhog after he hooks. And you can also... Boost a Reinhardt who is swinging into a grav if you have no other combos. His swings do a lot of damage normally, so when you damage boost it, it's even better to help. I'd say if you're wondering during a team fight if you want to be healing or damage boosting, keep an eye on how many of your enemies are dead. Generally, I think I start to mainly damage boost once about half the enemy team is dead. Like, if there's only like two people left, I am 100% damage boosting and my team can get used to it. So, I said before, you know, if there's anything that needs to be clarified, please ask me and I'll either make a video about it or I will just explain it to you in the comments to the best of my ability. And please remember that all of these tips that I've going on about are based on how I play Mercy. If they help you improve, that's great, but please, please don't hey, just uh, think that? that I can just magically make you amazing. My never dies. Toggle Guardian Angel. I don't remember why I have this set to off. But I feel like it's very important to have it off. I want to say, I want to say, like, do not quote me on this. I probably should have researched this. Let me actually do that right now. This is the best. I get to fucking clip my video all over the place. It's just me talking about mercy settings. I want to punch myself in the face right now. Yeah.